Hi guys, so today we're going to be creating, well, pretty pictures, which is basically what we do anyway, in my, using um, particles and creating bespoke particle um, kind of drawings really out of a few really simple techniques. So let's start the scene again and I'll just show you how we can rock and roll this. Now this is pretty cool because, um, hang on. Let's just create the particles first. So we're going to go to end particles. We've got points selected, and we're going to end particle tool. Um, I've got in mine set up conserve set up to one. Uh, I'm going to create a new solver with it. Um, that's the amount of particles I've got rolling. Um, my radius is set up to 200 because we want a, a large radius when we draw, and my sketching have always set down to zero. And I'm just going to plonk in. A little bit of drawing with the left mouse, and I'm going to let go. I'm going to hit enter, and that's going to create the nucleus and the particle. Uh, but it won't create an emitter because obviously we didn't create an emitter. So we've got a load of particles there. Now, first thing to know and to remember before you go any further, get your grid open. Um, now you can see that the particles are massively outside the grid, and that's going to affect uh, a few things. It's going to affect lighting and it's going to affect any kind of dynamic fields that we put on it and the values so quite easily because um, actually first of all with this particle selected just click ignore solver gravity um, what's kind of cool about this is we can scale it down so we've got our particles scaled down to kind of just outside the grid okay so I'm going to turn the grid off now we've got our particles so with the particles selected let's just go in down to the shading attribute um, and bring the point size down to one points one please thank you I don't know what happened there um, and I'm going to click uh, use lighting and then I'm going to go and hit number seven on the keyboard and we've lost everything which is perfectly fine so let's go into the uh, lighting menu. Let's go into the lighting menu and tear that strip off. And I'm going to create a point light. So we can see the point light is illuminating our particles. And I'm going to change the color of this just to some kind of blue. Uh, but we can see we haven't got too much fall off going on here. So I'm going to turn this to cubic. And again, if you'd have left your particles outside the grid as they were in the first place, you'd be getting um, some large values having to go in here to get any kind of lights working. So this is quite nice. We can start to light particles um, artistically without the worry of an emitter or anything like that. Um, we could duplicate this. Maybe we could have one round here. Maybe, maybe I'm feeling a bit girly and I want some pink. Yeah. And if you look at the particles from the light, you'll get a different look all the time. So obviously, you know, you can render this out and whatnot. Um, but what we can also do, because we've got a particle system, um, and let's say you didn't want to use any kind of dynamics, but you wanted a different shape, uh, you can go to the animation menu and to the deformers and you could create let's say a sculpt deformer in the center of this so we can scale that up um, and just turn up turn up the uh, max amount there you can see we're starting to pull particles out so you can create some really interesting effects with that so that's pulling the particles out from the inside of it and pushing them outside and then after a while we see we completely pull away all of it and create a completely different type of shape again this is a really nice sort of look we've got this kind of concave going on here and with the lighting um, you can create some awesome awesome effects and obviously you can animate this sculpt deformer, the scale, translation etc um, without worrying about any kind of um, dynamic simulation so it could be a false field or, or anything and obviously all the other attributes within the um, sculpt deformer still work or stretch and project and stuff and you can do some really crazy looking crazy looking things um, so it's sort of handy in motion graphics really you spend a little bit of time doing this and you haven't got to cache anything or worry about anything like that um, let's just go with a flip 
And that's what we had just now. So yeah, pretty cool. So that's Sculpt Deformer. Let's just get rid of that. And with the particles uh, selected, we can obviously create a lattice. So if you wanted to shape your particles, you can. Or not. What's going on here, Mr. Lattice? Let's try that again. Let's select the particles. Create deformers. Create lattice. Grab the lattice points. Oh, well, that is odd. Well, I never. Ah, oh, there we go. I hadn't rewound um, my timeline. I thought I must have been doing something crazy. Now make sure your timeline's rewound, otherwise you're not going to see what's going on. So yeah, we could create an egg. <laughs> or anything, really, that you wanted to create out of particles. So, you know, before, if you wanted to create an egg shape, you'd probably have modelled a... Um, a poly egg type shape and then emit the particles from it but this way you, know, you can create all sorts of shapes text as well whatever really light them nicely and you've just got a different thing to offer up in terms of sort of artistic creative flim flam but what I like to do with the um, particles selected is to uh, go back into the end dynamics menu and go into fields and create some turbulence now, I'm going to stick this up to 500, my favourite number. Um, with the turbulence, we can create some cool shapes. So if we turn the turbulence up to 100, and press play. It might not be enough. Let me just see if I've got play every frame selected here. Yeah. No, it's not enough. Just going to double check, actually, inside the relationship editor um, that... Uh, the particle plugged into the turbulence field yet, yeah, so let's just go to turbulence field again. Should be there, and let's just try a thousand. Just go into non shaded mode for a minute. I'm going to turn the attenuation down to zero. Not a lot going on. Let's stick a couple of zeros in the magnitude and see uh, what happens there. Nothing. It must be something to do with my particle that I've uh, forgotten. Also, I should have these on as well. Uh, ignore solver gravity. I'm sure I turn that on. And. Ah. It's because. It's because the deformer. Is on there, so I wonder if we can get rid of it by deleting the history. So with this one selected, let's create that field again. Excuse me while I troubleshoot this. Okay, like you found the problem. So if you go inside your end particle and open it up, you can see there's a deformed end particle shape there. We can delete that and then click back on the um, node above it and then go inside the particle shape, go down to object display and turn off intermediate. Much like when you create a mesh out of end particles. Same deal there. So now if we create a field and turbulence with a high amount. Yeah, we're starting to get some movement. Hurrah! Okay, so what I'm waiting for here, really, is a shape that I'm going to find interesting. And turbulence creates some pretty cool shape. Much like if you lay a load of sand over um, uh, a speaker with different frequencies, you'll get you'll get different types of shapes. But I'm just going to rewind this. I'm going to turn the attenuation down. I'm just going to look at my particle. Uh, conserve. And I might bring the conserve right down to zero so then they're not, they're not going to start flying out they're going to stick and clump to each other and start to make some kind of cool shapes as you can see here and I'll just stop it when I find a shape that I like and they're all starting to pull together and they're actually showing you what those frequencies of the turbulence look like because they're all pulling into that force 
which is pretty neat. And obviously you can change the frequency of that. So you can add, you could even animate seven now. You could even animate the frequency of that um, turbulence, um, and then render and then render that out for for different types of shapes and stuff. So that's kind of it, really. And then when when you've got the shape that you like, just select your particles and go up to um, N solver initial state set from current, so that when you rewind it, it's gonna stay as it should be. Uh, at this point, you might want to delete your uh, turbulence because it will continue doing what it's doing um, but if you want it to continue a bit more it will continue more and we could actually go and I'm just gonna double check what turbulence field I've got plugged in yeah is number two so we can change the phase let's change like the Y phase you see it's starting to do so pretty cool there we can change the frequency amount so it's starting to go really wobbly. Yeah, so it's almost starting to look like an oil painting in a way. Getting a really weird look. So that's really cool. So what you can do, obviously, is um, every time you find a nice one, just save it. Just save it. And then come back to it again. If you ever want to use it, you could create a whole set of... Um, particle scenes with different different fields, different frequencies, you know, and you can create some particle art if you wanted to, or use it in some kind of production, whatever you want. And also once you've got the shape you can create um you know stick a lattice over the top of it and bend it around and, and put it in some kind of shape you want. So um we could grab the particle here and just go in to the animation set and we could put um, a sculpt deformer in the middle of it and we can scale that up and start to get something really different so if we get those lights and just move them out of the way a bit see we've got a shape there that's just different and would have been hellish to try and create if you tried to do it all just you know pure pure purely dynamic but there's something neat there. Let's just hide that. So yeah, and you should be able to continue playing it. And you've now got the sphere of the uh, sculptor with your particles running around the outside of it, creating a very, very cool effect, which is quite complicated, really. But it's when you know how to create these things. Um, if I'd have said to you guys, I want you to create this with fields. It wouldn't have been so easy, you know. So, yeah, that's pretty neat. Obviously, as I said, you can render it out. Whatever. But there you go. That's the theory behind it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.